everyone happy new year and welcome to my channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for all the love and support on my videos last year thank you for commenting thank you for liking and thank you for sharing my videos if you are new my name is Rasheen and I create lifestyle beauty and travel related content as well as my experiences here in Canada so if you're interested in all of that don't forget to go ahead and click the subscribe button below it's somewhere here so just click the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so that you don't miss a video so we are starting the new year off with a bang and in today's video I'm going to be talking about how I applied for my study permit from Jamaica and my experience with that what I had to go through because I went through it so it's basically a story time so I'm going to be telling you guys why I decided to move to Canada, why Canada, how the process went when I started to, um, my application and when I got approved. So if you are interested, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started with um, why I decided to move to Canada and just a little bit of backstory about me. So I am 27 years old and if you don't know, I am from Jamaica, I lived in Jamaica and I think in about 2019, the beginning of 20, no, I want to say the end of 2018, I started to think a lot about, you know, where my life is was at that point where I wanted my life to go and I wasn't necessarily unhappy I mean I had a good job and things are going okay but I don't know you know when you start to think what am I doing what is my purpose in life you know what do I really want to do so I kind of had those questions I think I was having that like sort of like a um, quarter life crisis and I started to ask myself all of these questions and in doing so, I came up with the idea of, hey, why not move to another country? I felt like I was a little bit stagnant. I didn't, I didn't feel a lot of motivation with regards to, you know, work and um, being in Jamaica in terms of the opportunities. If you live in Jamaica, you know what I'm talking about in terms of movement for or rather opportunities for young people you have a barn with no gold spoon in your mouth then you know that life in jamaica can be a little bit difficult uh it takes a little while for you to climb that social ladder it takes a little while for you to earn a certain amount of income and based on where i wanted to be what i wanted to achieve i decided that at that point jamaica wasn't going to give that to me in the time that i wanted to get it not to say that you can live in jamaica and be successful but for me i i thought that you know i wanted things to kind of progress a little further so i decided okay let me look into my options where can i go which country can i move to the us was definitely off the list because me now don't know where we're from there so i decided okay us is out of the question what are my other options and i did a lot of research and came to the conclusion that canada was the best option based on a lot of factors and if you haven't seen my video about the top five reasons to move to canada go ahead and check that out so I decided Canada it is I'm going to move to Canada but how the hell am I going to do that I don't have any family in Canada I've never been to Canada I've never visited Canada I don't know I didn't know where to start basically so of course just like anybody else I did my research so I went online went on the computer came on YouTube watched a lot of videos and decided that the best option for me was to Come to Canada via study permit route so if you don't know one of the ways to migrate to Canada is through the Express Entry program so it's one of the well-known ways and one of the I wouldn't necessarily say easiest route but it could be considered one of the more I don't want to say fastest route either but it is a common way that most persons uh, migrate to Canada so when I looked into it 
migrating directly from Jamaica to Canada via the express entry route wasn't feasible for me because of the points. Now I will do a separate video in terms of how you can migrate to Canada via express entry in a detailed video. But when I calculated my points, I didn't have enough points, mainly because one, I didn't study in Canada, so I didn't have any points for that. Also, I didn't work in Canada and I didn't have any work experience in Canada, so I couldn't, I didn't have any points for that either. So my points was low. I didn't have, I don't have any family in Canada in terms of a, a brother or a sister or a mother or father in Canada, so I wouldn't have gotten any points for that as well. Even though I had a lot of years um, work experience. So I decided that in order for me to make the move, I would start out. The first step was for me to apply for a study permit to come to Canada, right? So once I decided that I was going to come to Canada via the study permit route, I had to figure out, well, how am I going to do this? So that was the end of 2018 that I decided Canada was it, right? Canada the trips so at the beginning of, of 2019 I decided to go ahead and do a lot more research into what were the requirements now the biggest 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 thing was the money and this is why it's important to always save uh, because I wanted to be out of there start I wanted to my plan was to start school in May of 2019 it's laughable now that I think about it but you know I was like yeah I want to go no I got so excited I was just I was ready for this I wanted I just want to be out of there so I went did the research realized that okay I'm going to need one year's worth of tuition money and I'm also going to need 10,000 Canadian dollars for living expenses. Though That was a basic financial requirement for myself as an individual that would be coming here alone to study. So I needed that and I also needed to get an acceptance letter from the designated learning institution here in Canada. I thought getting the, the what do you call it, the acceptance letter was the easy part. It was. The money part was a lot more difficult when you think about it because 10,000 Canadian dollars is over a million Jamaican dollars and then you have the school fee and the school fee here for a one year program ranges from anywhere the lowest I've seen is about 8,000 and those are for schools outside of like Ontario and in some like northern place where it snows all the time and then upwards of twenty thousand dollars for a one-year program and then obviously if you want to study for two years you have to multiply that by two so i decided i want to go study i don't want to do anything longer than one year so i did a lot of research on schools and all of that i think i applied in february and i applied to another school but I had gotten a response from Humber. I think they took about two months. Was it two months? I did. I do think they took about two months to get back to me in terms of a uh, an acceptance. So I got my acceptance letter to Humber, and from the beginning of the year until the end, about the uh, until about August of 2019 i was starting to gather all of my funds to ensure that i had the 10,000 canadian for living expenses so once i got the acceptance letter and i gathered all the funds to show that okay i can finance myself alone in canada i decided to submit my application so let me just let me just get my laptop here so that I can show you guys. Okay, so I got my acceptance to school in around February, but then of course I had to make sure that I had all the funds. So I, in addition to what I already had, I had to do a little bit more saving to ensure that I had all of the money for both the tuition as well as the living expenses, right? 
so in about august thereabout i decided that okay i'm going to submit my application for the study permit so i have my laptop here and i just wanted to give you guys a full view in terms of the timeline of when i submitted the documents when i got um, a response and how long the process took overall so i'm logged into my account here it says that i officially submitted my application to cic on october 7th 2019 backtrack a little bit i wanted to submit my application from august let me tell you i went through hell getting the police report so the police report is something that i thought was a requirement i did a lot of research some person said oh they submitted their application without a police report and they got through and then some person said that they submitted um without it and they didn't get through and just a whole lot of information on the internet so i was like you know what i want to submit the application with it just in case so you know i prefer to do that than to get a rejection and then have to reapply so i went through hell trying to get the police report because at that time the police report office in kingston had closed down and then everything was delayed and i made the decision to apply without the police report yeah however i wrote a letter to state that the uh process was you know um the 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 police records office was closed and there was a lot of delay in terms of getting the uh, police report so I, I had submitted that with my application as well so now let's just get back to the timeline so submitted my application on october 7th 2019 so they gave me a confirmation that my application was submitted it just says that you have successfully transmitted your online application and your payment receipt number is xyz xyz so in terms of payment i had to pay about 250 something dollars i'm not 100 percent sure what the cost is now but that includes the cost for your biometrics as well that's your fingerprint so I got the confirmation of the online application on October 7th then I got another email from CIC to say that the application was submitted so I got a letter to say hey your application has been received by Immigration Canada and that you are expected to provide a copy of your passport with the, the application so just details in terms of you know the fact that they received their application and all of that obviously i would have submitted with my application my passport digital photographs like passport size pictures in digital format of course i also had to fill out the study permit application which is going to take your biographics is going to ask you which school you um, are intending to go to how you're going to pay for school i also had to submit bank statement to show that i can pay my school fee as well as the um living expenses as well so i did that and i that's basically all i did and there was another form called the family information form that you have to fill out to show all of all of your immediate family members that you have in jamaica with you moving on on the same day october 8th 2019 i got a letter from cic called the biometrics collection letter so this letter was basically to say hey you need to take your fingerprints which is a requirement once you take your fingerprints this uh, last for 10 years so you any application that you do with the immigration with canada then um, you don't have to do it again for another 10 years so the fingerprints last 10 years and that's included in the application fee that you submit so i got a request on october 8th to submit my biometrics so i went to the visa application center in kingston submitting my fingerprints was a very short process and yeah i just did that then after that came the waiting 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 so on november the 24th 2019 
I got a correspondence letter and this correspondence letter was just to um, thank me for doing the biometrics which I, I was like okay I did the biometrics from the same day that they sent me the biometrics letter I did the biometrics and then they sent me a letter on the 24th of November saying thank you for the biometrics so I was like okay whatever no on the same day the 24th of November 2019 in the night while I was watching a movie no less eating ice cream I got a letter from the government of Canada to say that Dear Rasheen Foster, thank you for your interest in studying in Canada. After a careful review of your study permit application and supporting documentation, I have determined that your application does not meet the requirements of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act and blah blah blah. I am refusing your application on the following grounds. Uh, study permit denied denied I was distraught I am distraught now just thinking about the fact that they rejected my application I was very confident and even though I did the application myself I was very very confident I did my research I knew exactly what to do hell I even helped persons before me to do the application and they got through so I was very very confident and when I saw this rejection I was like what the F, like what do you mean what do you mean rejected like what uh <sighs> but anyway we're here now so let's not dwell on that so the thing about Canada or the good thing is that they tell you exactly why they denied your application so that you can reapply this is not like when you go to the embassy in uh, Kingston the US embassy in Kingston and them say you're gonna get the visa and then just give one green piece of paper with everybody until they say okay we just you just don't get a visa so you don't know exactly why you didn't get it but for um, CIC they tell you exactly why they denied the application so in my refusal letter I was told exactly why my study permit was denied and Honestly, when I looked at the application, I was like, okay, why are you guys denying my application? Like, why? So, in my, in my case, they deny my application based on the fact that they said, I'm not satisfied that you have sufficient and available resources without working in Canada to pay the tuition fees, as well as to maintain yourself in terms of living expenses, which to me was ridiculous because they asked for 10,000 Canadian dollars um, for living expenses and they asked for the school fee. Um, and I provided that as well. However, how you show the money is very important. So I had a Canadian account and a Jamaican account and I decided that I wanted all the funds in my Canadian account to show in Canadian dollars. So I just transferred my money from my Jamaican account to my Canadian account in just one large dump and I just had it there. Did my bank statement and everything, but the bank statement basically showed that, hey, she just recently opened the Canadian account and this X amount of money was just transferred in this time which wasn't a lot of time so it would appear to the government of Canada that money was not mine and they decided to deny the application of course I was not and still I'm not a hundred percent sure that that was the case I just assumed I was berserk I didn't know what to do really and then eventually after I calmed down did a little bit more research I decided that you know what I'm going to apply again I'm going to apply again so i decided to apply again and let's see here in terms of the timeline so what i did to rectify that was i just decided to wait at least a bit give it a little bit more time which means that the money would stay in the canadian account and aging and i added more money to it to show that the money was mine basically so the second application when i decided to reapply i decided to reapply in okay so remember now my application was denied on the on november 24th 2019 so i gave myself december 
um i gave myself december the money would have been in the account from before that so from that time until january it would have been a few months the money was in the account and i was taking notes and putting in and doing all of that stuff so i decided then that in january i would apply january of 2020 i would apply again for my study permit so i applied on the 26th of january 2020 I got the submission confirmation the same day then I got a correspondence letter on the 3rd of March so January February and then March I got a correspondence letter and that correspondence letter just basically said what did it say it is the same thing that it said before about the biometrics even though I didn't have to give my biometrics again it just said thank you for your biometrics so I knew that based on the previous application that that day was the day I was going to get a response so just as I suspected later down in the day I got a request to submit my passport and from you get the request to submit your passport it means that your application was approved so on March 3rd 2020 my um, study permit was approved but I got the official letter from CIC on the 6th of March to say that my study permit was approved and you need to go to the, um, the visa application center to submit your passport so that you can get the visa stamp and all in all guys that was basically the process in terms of timelines on how I went ahead and submitted my study permit application I will be doing a separate video in detail on how you can go ahead and apply to come to Canada via the study permit route and then eventually we'll talk about how to go about applying for express entry as well so I hope you guys got a little bit more of an insight in terms of what my process was like coming here it definitely was not easy as i said i got denied the first time but i was not going to take no for an answer because way me no like way me no way me no <laughs> so i decided that you know i wasn't going to let that deter me i went and i applied again and voila here i am so if you are in the same uh, zone right now if you are applying and you're anxious and you've gotten a denial never fear just apply again just do exactly what it is that they said to correct in the letter and you will get an acceptance so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this video to the end as i said at the end don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next one